Yeah. You like ready to talk, yeah? Yeah, come on. All come right, on. let's Always get into this. Let's get into this. So today, for the first time, we've got two guests. And we've got some special, special guests. We've got Rosie and Molly Kamita. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having Pleasure. us. Pleasure. Of course, of course, of course. So obviously, in these in these unprecedented times, I've got to ask, how how's COVID been treating you guys? Go on, Rose, you can go first. Yeah, COVID's raw. <laughs> <laughs> probably going to say, right, say the same thing anyway, no? No, no, that's what I'm thinking. I'll just say same. <laughs> where was she said? Where, I know, where's yeah, she been? Yeah. She's been with me. Yeah. So I'm just thinking. Go on. Like, do you know what? COVID's actually been good to us. Yeah. Like, in terms of, obviously, the situation's bad, right? Like, we're not able to live the lives that we normally would. But in terms of knuckling down on mm. things that we needed to knuckle down with and kind of flipping it into a positive and it's allowed us to to stay focused on, on certain things and I think it's been it's been really good to us in that aspect of, of work and training and diet and all of that yeah definitely I think a bit more he- I like to see it as like I feel like I've had headspace mm. and I think sometimes you it's a really hard thing to get headspace when you're so on the go all the time you feel like you don't get that stop whereas we've been forced to stop so you either take that because once things get back up and running, it's like that. And before you know it, you're back into the rhythm of things. So it's like, what could we do to put us in a better situation coming out of lockdown than we were in previously? So it's given us that. But also a lot of perspective, really grateful, to be honest, to be in the positions that we've been in in lockdown uh, compared to others. I've got a garden, for example. Like It's, it's those little things like that. Like mm. We were like, wow, like... I never, res- I never was grateful for that garden as much as I am now, you know, and it's your only way to get out of the house. And, and I'll be honest, for me personally, I won't speak for you, but for me, my perspective on my whole life has changed. Um, so, yeah, just trying to stay positive on it, though. So, so what's actually changed? Like you say, your perspective's changed. Let's dive a little bit deeper on that. What's, what's actually changed? Um, I, I think um, my appreciation for the little things. I don't think I, I think I took a lot for granted before. Like I said, having a garden, just having my family there and stuff like that. I know that the, those are things that people haven't had during lockdown. Um, so for me, it's like, you know, and she's sitting next to me. So even us, like our relationship, I think, has been pushed to no, like different levels during lockdown. Don't get me wrong, it ain't always been good. <laughs> yeah. yeah like, <laughs> it ain't always been good. It's been hard. Like this thing's been like a marriage. Like yeah. it's because, you know, this is the closest person to me, but. In when you're in lockdown and when you're constantly with each other, work together. You work together. You you train, play football together. You go to the gym together. You wake up. She's downstairs. Like I can't get away from this (laughs) kill. It's just a lot. You know, I go for a walk. She's there. Like and it's tested us. But yeah, I'm I'm grateful that I've had also her in this in that situation. Just just talking about you two and how you're together and it's like a marriage and whatnot. Like me personally, like with my brother, if he annoys me, I'll just separate myself away from my brother. With you two, it feels like even though you want to separate, you won't separate. Mm. You know what? Why is that? Mm. Why do you feel like you know? Like you, obviously, people argue, have rows or whatever. But it feels like from from when I've known you since you were young, you are always together. I've I've seen you argue and still be t- like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like next to each other. Yeah. There's no like, don't talk to me, leave me alone. I don't. Yeah. know. You might have done it for a few hours or whatever, mm. but it feels like you're you're never gonna leave each other's side. You're gonna be together no matter what. Mm. Why is that? Like, why can you not just say, I'm gonna do my own thing and you're going to do your own thing? Do you know what I mean? Because you're both independent ladies. I know you do yeah. stuff together, but I know you can, you obviously do your own different stuff as well. Mm. So why, what, what is that? I think for us, like, there ain't many people in the world with a twin. Why would we not, mm. why would we not utilize that? So that's, that's how I've always seen it. Why would I not utilize the fact that I've got someone who, is as driven as me, who wants the same things in life, who ha- shares the same interests. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna distance myself from that. I think it, it's great for us. And like you said, like yeah, listen, I, I really don't want people to listen to this thinking we're weirdos and we're we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna buy. I'm single, yeah. Like, it's not, it's not like affecting anything. Yeah. I can still, you know, I'm open to that. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, like we're not gonna buy houses and knock the wall down like when we're older it's not that yeah but in terms of oh, why would we not mm. I, I don't know i don't know whether that is a negative or a positive but i i, I like the fact that we're able to, to utilize our relationship and i also think we've tried i also think yeah. we've tried to um differentiate ourselves oh, quite a lot. Yeah? we okay. have tried um, and i think 
How long did that last? A bit. Yeah, well, <laughs> a couple of hours. Yeah, a couple of hours. But no, no. Seri- all, all, all jokes aside, um, mm. the first time it ever happened for us where we actually tried to, we had, we had a conversation. We actually sat down and. What, what tipped you to get to that point? No, Rosie, Rosie got a pro at West Ham. Okay. Yeah. Rosie got a pro at West Ham. And I had stopped playing football six months before that whole situation happened. Mm-hmm. And I I knew I wanted to go into a media career. So um, I just got a job at MUTV, so mm-hmm. at Man United. Yep. And Rosie had got a pro at West Ham. And I remember sitting down one day and we're like, oh, you well, now we're starting to, you know, like. And that's different now. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're in the same sport, but your timetable is way oh, different yeah. now. Yeah, and way we different. want different things. And that mm. had never happened to us before. Yeah. Never. Because I'll be honest, every season rolled into the next mm. and then. Whatever happened for me happened for her and vice versa. Or there was an opportunity. Oh, bring your sister. And that's just how our life lives have been mm. up until this point. Oh. I weren't good enough, yeah? She was. So, right, so the first time she us, said it, it was like, like oh we've got hey, exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> exclusive. <laughs> I can't believe it as well. Oh my god! Really? Really? Weren't good enough for a right footed player. She's a lefty, so you just get your opportunities. Right. Do, you know do, you know I mean? do you know she's like put my whole career down to my left foot? No, nah, it's, like, it's actually poor. No, nah, it's but a good anyway. left foot. But no, nah, I'm saying like honestly, when that situation happened, it was the first time that we sat down and said, right, what do we do now? Because mm. you've got your schedule, I've got mine, and they're totally different. And we struggled. Like I remember, I, I, I don't think you'll mind me speaking about it, but when Rosie got a pro at West Ham. Um, I think emotionally that was quite difficult to not have me there mm-hmm. because I'd always been there. So your comfort, your the person that of you course. go to when yeah. you're having a hard time, she's gone. Mm. So so now we have to find out who we are. I think as individuals, because, yeah. and that that was a, what, a whole season that happened, mm-hmm. right? So in that space, I think that was the best time ever for us as individuals. Now we've come back to the same paths, but I think we needed that time apart to understand that. We can do things alone and we're capable of doing it. And I'm glad that we've been through that to then hopefully be better the other side of it. Wow. Um, so like, very, very interesting. And we're going to dissect that, but I just want to go back to the start. So obviously you're, you're very heavily involved in, in women's football now, but where did that journey in football begin? So that started actually at, at Lee Valley where we met Abs, <laughs> really. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and that started there for us. Um, we we've always been interested in in football that was through our dad like growing up that was what we done every weekend go to the park play football with the boys do you know when you like goalposts and you got jumpers as goalposts all of that like fifa street that was us yeah Um, no it was funny yeah about that so (laughs) when we used to play out with the boys and that we didn't understand the concept of like being a girl and how that was different to being a boy like, you know, we play shirts versus skins, skins. yeah? Me and Rosie, <laughs> up until the first age of, like, ones. 14. Skins. Boom. <laughs> Top <side. laughs> First one, you know? Oh, we don't understand. Promise yeah. you. Because we would, get, we would actually get frustrated when, like, people would say, oh, you can't do that. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, who are you to tell yeah, me I can't do like, that? I've been doing this. Yeah, this like, is what I do. This is, like, this literally, is England shorts, England top <laughs> tucked into the back, yeah. or Spurs top, whatever we're yeah. wearing. But, sorry, I can't... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, that, that was our childhoods, and we... That was us, you know, like football really did define us. Um, whether that was a, we'll go into that further down mm-hmm. the line anyway, as we got older, whether that was a positive or negative, but mm-hmm. football was us. And every time you thought of women footballers, you'd think of, of me and Mo in the in the area, I think. Um, and then, yeah, at Lee Valley, we continued to play, got opportunities to go out and play in like Boston and yeah, Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just before you go, just talking yeah. about your family, you've mentioned yeah. your family. So just tell us a little bit about your family, mm-hmm. how many brothers and sisters, okay. what your background is, where your mum's from, your dad's from, just all little, yeah. just little things like that, just so people understand yeah. and try and picture what, what kind of environment you've grown up in. Because yeah. you're saying you played football, we don't know if your was your brother into football? Was your uh, sister? Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, nah. brothers cool. and sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, there's five of us. Yeah. So, um, me and Mo are the youngest, and then we've got two older brothers, one older sister. Um, and then our dad was the the f- driving force behind why we got involved in football. That was it. Mm-hmm. And because the boys didn't play, when we come along and was interested in football, he pounced. Latched. <laughs> he latched onto that. He was like, all right, these girls are playing football, and they're going to do well in, in football. And that, mm-hmm. That's kind of what he lived and breathed by. Mm-hmm. Um, and then mum was just a typical, like, she'd come watch the, watch the games, but just be having a chat with her mate. Didn't, didn't really care, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but... Loved it. Uh, and that was it. So, um, yeah, that's kind of our background. Mum is from, um, she's half English, half Indian. And then dad is uh, half Lithuanian. Well, dad was half Lithuanian, half Irish. Yeah. So, that, but yeah, that's like real humble background. beginnings. Like just two girls from Enfield love football. That's it. Like that's literally, it. that's it. Always did. 
Wow, 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 wow. So when's the first like experience of, all right, we're good at football now? Like when do people recognise <laughs> you're good at football? Is that school? Is that before school? Mm. Is it primary school? Like when does that happen? I, I, I personally think it started... At primary school, because we had a, a teacher in year six, Mr. Spencer, mm. he started like the first first girls football team, and we were like big advocates for that. In like literally from year four onwards, we were like, oh, girls football team, yeah, we'll get that. And we recruited all these girls. <laughs> Some of them couldn't kick it, but we're like, cool, <laughs> like you want to play? Let's let's do it. And I think that without even knowing, we were probably um, breaking stereotypes from a very young age, mm. you know. And and but you're not conscious you're doing it. You're just like, yeah, we've. There's now a girls' football team at the school, but I didn't realise not a lot of t schools had that, you know, but you have to have people within it that, that are motivated to do it and then the people that want to drive it. And I think that we became those people without even knowing it. Um, but then I, I guess the, the first big thing for us was like, oh, actually, maybe we could do something with this was um, year seven, meet a girl um, in called Aisha. It abs knows, yeah, meet a girl. She was at Tottenham. She took us along to training one night and then from there we get signed for Tottenham. We'd played there for 10 years. Like, it was crazy. Cheers, Cheers Aisha. Love yeah, that. Thanks yeah. Love. Good, <laughs> nice for the bringing. Yeah, thanks, girl. Um, so, yeah, what was the dynamic like in school when you're probably better than half of the boys in, in your year mm. and you might even be playing on a playground, you're doing your little bits, nutmegs, <laughs> whatever, even nutmegging him or whatever. Um, what's the dynamic like? Or like, boys starting to treat you different now because you're cold at football? Are they even, maybe even treating you better because you know about football? Like, what's the dynamic mm. like? Yeah, I have. we're just one of the boys. Yeah. Like, mm. we're... That is literally us, and I feel like oh, we're still trying to get out of that yeah. <laughs> at 26 yeah. um, because that is just us, but I wouldn't change that. I feel like that's really been the core of who we are, and it's what we are like as people now, and I, I, I truly believe that is why we've got certain opportunities or been given certain opportunities in life is because we are built the way we are built, right? And um, the boys... Yeah, it's it's weird that we were treated as one of the boys. It, that we, mm. They were just our friends, right? Yeah. Growing up. And I suppose as you get a little bit older, I'm like, we got rid of the one eyebrow and the tash that we used to have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. It was so bad. Uh, like, we've, we got, like, we've got a few pictures, by the way, that we'll put up. But we, 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 appreciate we, we, you. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, I son. suppose that's when the dynamic changed a little bit as you get a little bit older and you realise, like, you know, birds and bees and all of that. Yeah. Um, but, no, I think, yeah, yes. it's like 100% spot yeah. on, but, like, it was like society sort of told you like, oh, if you're a girl, you've got to do this. You know what mm. I mean? And we're, whereas we were like, why? Don't we, get that. To be fair, we went to a school that was fully pledged into sports. Mm. So oh, like, yeah, it was like probably the best place for you to come up. And we had unbelievable footballers at our school. Like it was just, all the boys were good. Every single year group was very good at football. <laughs> so for you guys to come through at that, it probably was the best thing. I think if you was in another school, mm. it might've been a little bit harder. Just like you said, you, they might've been like, oh, like, why do they play football? Whereas at mm. our school, everyone was so big on sports and football. Mm. It was like, we used to like, obviously I was a few years younger, but we knew we knew about them. As soon as they come to year seven, oh, the twins, we'd go and watch them and be like, oh my God, they, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And you know what it's like, we've been like being, mm. being a boy or whatever. If someone is good at football, no matter how stupid you are, what you look like, you're respected straight away. 100%. So we respected them straight away. We didn't see them as like, women we saw them as oh they are ballers mm. that's what you used to call it oh the two ballers <laughs> like you know you see them around and you're like oh, boy, yeah, what you know you feel good like you know what i mean so it was always like that it wasn't like oh these two two asian girls playing for what they're doing why are they playing football what it was never like that it was mm. like they're cold they're really good at football like what's going on do you know what i mean and it was just from then on i think it was like the best place for you to come up in mm, yeah definitely. and i think that's what's scary though if we didn't have the right people around us and people who didn't respect us um, imagine we got slated and treated a different way. That's when girls fall out of the game. Mm. And that's that's what's really mm. scary for us to see that. And you witness it. The drop-off rate at a girl at 16 years old, because there's other interests that come into it now, or she's treated a little bit differently, mm. or there's remarks and, and words thrown about, like certain stereotypes, they fall out. They don't like it. They can't stand the mm. fact that they might be seen as different. Um, and that's that's tough. So can you can you touch on that a little bit? Like what sort of stuff and did you did you experience that and what sort of stuff you don't have to say what they were saying, but how did you, you know, get through that of having a little bit maybe of thick skin and just saying, forget them idiots, let me just keep doing my thing. Do you know do you know what I gotta say? Like, I think we're really lucky and I think when you have two two of you, it's mm. quite hard to affect two people because if and I'll be honest, like like what Abs was saying, like There'd be a lot of girls that could sit here, having played football their whole lives, and go, I got called this, I got called that. I feel like we were respected. 
And I feel like actually because we had older brothers and sisters in the school and because we, I feel like we were protected as well, mm. you know, respected and protected. So when you have that around you, mm. you don't feel untouchable, but you feel like if someone was to say something, you're a little bit like, all right, you're just a hater, you know? And yeah. I think um, our family allowed us to feel like we could be exactly who we wanted to be. And to this day, we, we're allowed to be exactly who we want to be, what we want to do. And if anyone says anything to you, it's just because they want to be you. That's all it is. And, mm. I, and I, honestly, like, that's how we live our lives. Mm. Yeah, that's sick. That's sick. So what advice would you give to, you know, uh, maybe a 16-year-old girl now that's playing that doesn't have the two, doesn't have the older brother to say, like, mm -hmm. if you talk about my sister, it's <laughs> going to be mad. Um, so what advice would you maybe give to them? For, for me, it's, for me, it's, it's really simple. It's like, just do your thing. Mm. Like, honestly, like, that whole... That period of time where you let outsides, outsiders have an impact on what you do in your future is re a really tough one. And I think that is when you're younger. But actually, it's about surrounding yourself with like-minded people. And I was lucky enough that my like-minded person has been with me from the day I was born. But find like-minded people, stick with them, and actually make sure that the only environment that you allow people into, and when you do let people into your space, that they're people that, that respect you and are not going to make you feel a certain way. And for me, your circle's everything. So find a good circle, stick with them people and do not try and be anyone other than yourself. Mm. But I think you could relate that to like abs, even you growing up and, and being at Lee Valley, like doing extra training and not going out on a night out and drinking and instead mm. throwing yourself in, creating them good habits at that age. Are oh, you doing that? Yeah, yeah. Ali was doing that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So we were all very similar and I feel like that's why we've, we're still in each other's lives mm. now. It's like you have the same goals, the same desires, and that it's hard to do at the time because all your mates are going out and they're going to this party and they're drinking and they're smoking and they're doing all this. And realistically, you don't want to do it. And mm. you know, when you know deep inside who you are, when you're not doing the right things, you feel it. And 100%. I think the minute you feel that in your gut, when you're in sitting in a room and it don't feel right, mm. that's when you've got to remove yourself. 100%. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we learned that early on. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I totally agree with what you say, but it, it just, it's not even just for, you know, 16 year old females coming through and um, wanting to stick to certain things. I think that's just the general thing in it. When you believe in something, you kind of got to go all out, regardless if you're a female footballer or a young footballer or whatever you're in. I think it's important that you touched up on it. It's you just got to believe in yourself and your circle is everything. Like Molly, you said, if your circle ain't the right thing, get out. No matter who you are, old, young or whatever, if that circle ain't, where you want to be or they're not pushing you or you're not looking at the people around you and thinking, you know what, they're better than me. They're doing good things. I need to be in that circle mm. and leave this circle. So you kind of, I think some people see it as, I'm in this circle, I'm comfortable. I'm just going to stay here. Mm, yeah. Whereas really, if you're comfortable, it ain't really the right thing, is yeah. it? You need to go with people that are going to push you. And like you said, that's why we're in each other's lives. You know, we went to school together. We didn't really speak, but you kind of, we kind of knew each other. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And as we got older, you knew that through the experiences that I went, you could come to me at any point. It doesn't matter. I'll always be honest with you and, and tell you and tell you what you need to do or where you need to go. And I know sometimes I come across a bit rude and harsh, <laughs> but it's for your best interest. Need that's that, that's yeah. how that's yeah. that's how I see it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, so just going through like school, you get you're playing for Spurs now, ten years. When do you start to think we've got a chance here of making like actually becoming mm. professional footballers? C can I be honest, like? It's really hard because th that moment never happened. Never happened, not for me, because yeah. it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. But what has happened is that platform and where women's football is now has allowed us to have opportunities that I wish, that you know, I never dreamed of having, all because of the game. Okay. The women's, women's football game that we knew it when we were 11 years old and got that opportunity at Tottenham was in a different place to yep. what it is in now. Yeah, yeah. The opportunity now, oh my God, if I'm a 16 year old girl now, I'm saying go for it, you know? So you're saying at 16, 17, you'd already been at Spurs for X amount of mm -hmm. years. You never thought I want to be a professional didn't footballer? Didn't know. Didn't know it was oh, an option. Oh, you didn't know you, it was an option. Didn't you you yeah. was just playing. You didn't see girls on TV playing football. No, no, you didn't. You didn't yeah, know yeah, that it was, there yeah, was yeah. academy. She we didn't. went to university. Yeah. We went to uni. Because like, that's what you get told to do, innit? Yeah. Yeah. So, so in your mind, it was, I play football because I enjoy it. No, I'm not playing football because I'm going to make a certain amount. This is going to be my full-time job. It was I never. wish that was my mindset. Like, I wish that... That there was it was hard back then though. I know it's still hard now, but even back then there was hardly any any money on it. Do you know what I mean? Oh, even yeah. even, oh, now, even if now, if you're not playing for the top teams, you probably know more than me. You're not, you're not still getting a certain amount that you feel comfortable with mm. to live. So I can only imagine back then 
you're thinking I, you can't make an earning. So yeah. your whole thought process was, I'm going to play football. What else do I do on this? What, and then what was your thought? Pro- what were you thinking? Because you want to play football, but now you're coming out of school. You can't yeah. just play football mm-hmm. because how are you going to live? Exactly. And that's what I mean. And that, that's the reality. That's a harsh reality of women's football. Like being honest, like there is not money in that game. Uh, now there is, but mm. back when we, there was no money in that game and there wasn't even like a vision it wasn't even like, oh, I want to be that person because you didn't see that person. So mm. I think even for Rosie, how old were you when you got your pro? That was still a conversation, wasn't it? Yeah, like 24. 24. I had to take a massive pay cut from what I was earning to go and play pro. Um, but I think, do you know what? I will never change that though. Like the way women's football was at that time because we were at uni, mm. we had a job and we were playing part-time football. So we were driving to training Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, playing a game on Sunday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, you aren't getting in after a full day of work, full day of uni, until half 10, 11 o'clock. Like, but that created us. Like, we mm. know what hard work looks like now. And I think that, I wouldn't change that. I think that's that's done the world of good for us yeah. because, well, you know what it's like. You were yeah. driving to Brighton at some yeah, point, yeah, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, right. <laughs> still do, <laughs> by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Whitehall, yeah. Whitehall, yeah. Yeah. Whitehall, yeah. yeah. Whitehall, yeah. They know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so do you know what I mean? We, I feel like that completely um, builds Build who you. we are now. Yeah. yeah. So touch a little bit on on your uni experience. So mm-hmm. are you just going through school like a like you know the normal kids are and they're playing doing UCAS and whatever whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, no, we actually got an opportunity to go out to America. Okay. Um, so our our sixth form experience was very different to everyone else because we knew the two years in sixth form was us prepping for America and mm. leaving the UK. Mm. So we knew what that looked like. We were in the gym. We were getting on the ball 10 times more than we normally would because we had to be ready for it. Um, so that's kind of what that looked like for us. So we signed for four years to play out in America um, and ended up coming back nine months after um, due to numerous factors. Lost our dad just before we flew out to America we ended up grieving for nine months instead of actually enjoying ourselves because mm. we could we weren't coping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's just facts. So I think when you get to that point where you, you can't cope and you haven't got your family around you, but you're trying to, to make America work, maybe because my dad wanted that more so mm. than what, probably what we did. So mm. we had to try and make that work for him. Um, we, we just were unhappy and, uh, and sad. Yeah. So we just ended up coming home. And... That, and at the time, we viewed that as a fa- we failed because mm. imagine you, like you spend two years. Everyone, everyone in Enfield knows the twins. Everyone's are going, going mad. Everyone's like, they made nuts. it. They're kind of <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Everyone go heat for it. Everyone, yeah. Yeah. everyone was like that though. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it was. Yeah. It was literally Crazy. like everyone knew about. It. Even obviously, I'd left school by then, and it was like the big moments coming. They're going to America. Like, no, it, it was honestly. No, you don't remember at that time. I'm, I'm at West Ham, and I'm thinking, oh my god, they they're gonna make it. Like, and I'm thinking. Like this is this is unbelievable. Like we we can't wait to see you go. And for whatever reason, obviously, like there's loads of different factors of why it didn't work out. Mm. And I like I remember you coming back and we had a conversation of because it was like all your life you've been preparing for this moment. And people that don't know, you probably went to America because it was big for women's football mm. at that time. It wasn't yeah. that big, but it was bigger than being bigger in, than in here. Yeah, you had no chance here basically. Yeah. Over there, you're giving yourself an education and you can play football and actually make something of yourself. So we all knew that, but now all this time you've been prepping, you've gone out there, you've had to come back and it was like everything you've done has basically, it's like resetting. Mm. That's what it felt like. Yeah. But like you said, Rosie, it weren't really resetting. It was all an experience to gear you up for where you are now, mm. really yeah. and truly, because thick skin, you know what it's like taking a chance, sacrificing things and it's built you up to be better and, and stronger now. But at the time you're thinking, we've actually failed. Yeah. And not only failed yourselves, failed everyone. Yeah. Oh, it's horrible. You were like the hope of Enfield. <laughs> you, the whole of Enfield. We, we took that whole county. And Enfield, Enfield could have been on the map. They're not on the map now because of these two. That's why. We failed Enfield. Like, oh, no. Enfield was about to be put on the map. You know how like, if you said someone, that's, am, am I joking? No, you're, no you well, understand. listen, the amount of people like, that turned up to the airport to wait by, I felt bad. I was thinking, oh my God, we, don't, like, we come back months and then, after. Yeah, they've yeah. had to come back. And, mm. Where's your head at now? Like f- all these things are in your head. Mm-hmm. Where are you at now? Mm. Uh, personally, like I think that we lost ourselves from the time we got back from America for maybe four years. Mm. So it was like right, when, you, when you say lost yourself, what do you mean lost yourself? Just trying to prove a point, and I don't know who to. Like 
we had failed that in our heads. Yeah, you failed. Now, whatever you do, just go and do it. Like, and, and when you do it, do it, right? So we came back and then we started, I want to see if I got my timings right. No, 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 sorry. So we came back and you are at rock bottom, you are, you mm -hmm. are. And the novelty, you're home, you're home and the novelty wears off really quick and then all of a sudden, oh my God, I'm back in Enfield. Like, <laughs> oh my God, how has this happened? Like, what? Yeah. Crazy. And then um, we, we find ourselves just following what society tells you to do. So what do I do now? Okay, let's find the UK uni because that's what you should do, go to uni, right? Mm. We should have never gone to uni. Yeah. I wish someone grabbed us, shook us and said, you two are not built for uni. You don't need to go to uni. Mm. Why are you going to uni? Because What, for a bit of paper? That's not who you are. And mm. I wish, I wish someone, not knew us enough, but I just wish we had someone that said, why are you doing that? And we, we went out, we lived the uni life, drinking. You so do we it. hadn't touched alcohol before. We yeah. hadn't been them people. So three years of our life, now all of a sudden, we got freedom. We ain't training every day. We, we ain't got no deadlines to meet. We got no tests and all this stuff that you had to prepare for for America. So you're like, oh, wow, this is what real yeah. life's like. And you were playing and better than everyone anyway, if that makes sense. So you, so didn't you can have get to, away with yeah, it. Yeah, so you didn't have to train as much because oh, right. you knew no. would step on, start and line up, I'm going to play. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and I'll be honest, that's exactly what happened. Mm. And that was how we were for two years. Again, you sh we should have finished uh, the first uni we went to. This is how bad it was. And when I look back, we were messes, man. We went to... <laughs> we went to a uni in America, we then went to Brighton Uni and then we finished in Hertfordshire Uni. That tells you everything. Mess, yeah? So <laughs> we go to Brighton. <laughs> we go no, to... We're in bits. We were in bits. Like, the decision making. I look back, I'm like, were you not on something? Because what, where was your heads at? That was not Did in a good space. Did you ever speak to someone about them decisions that you were making at the time? Like, you know when you said, okay, we're going to Brighton. You were just making the these choices. The most erratic... No, no, we're not like that, nah. <laughs> but back in the day, erratic. We yeah. woke wow. up one morning and said, we don't want to be in Brighton anymore. Packed our stuff up, left, transferred to Hertfordshire. We're going to Within, finish at home. We, yeah. we had that feeling for one night and left. Sick. Erratic. I, don't, I wouldn't erratic. say erratic. I, I, I think I've been emotional, a bit harsh. Though. No, yeah. but, um, I think, yeah, but I emotional. think like you said, yeah. if you're not happy in something, and I'm a firm believer in this, yeah. get up and go. Mm. It yeah. doesn't matter what it is. Mm. Whether you're at uni, you're at the best job you've ever been out, you're, I don't know, in a relationship, if something doesn't feel mm. right and you feel like a certain, it, it's a weight on your shoulders, get out. And you might look at it as erratic, but I look at it as you've done the right thing. Yeah, do you we know did. what I mean? Like, get out, go, why are you there? Why For yeah. what? Yeah. And you could do the same thing home. That, and that's what I mean. And, and that's what I mean about that lost period because we had done two years at Brighton and it weren't us. These people who we were was not us. Mm. I'm like, where are them girls gone that was like these focused, no driven girls? Is, yeah. We lost them. I'm not even joking. I, I didn't know who we was for a long time. And the only way you change that is by changing your environment. Comes back to what I said. Who who are you around? We were around the wrong people. We had no one telling us that we, that was even wrong. We're just around these same football girls that love that life. And some of them are still there now. That's fine. And I'm not judging that, but that's not us. Mm. So after two and a half years, we came home. And then you start to, now you begin the rebuilding process. What did you study, by the way? International events management. Okay. Events. Both of you done the same thing? Of course. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course. We were like, which one? Uh, that one. Yeah. Well, you don't have to, it's, it weren't, it was practical. Mm. It yeah. was about talking to people and stuff. We were like, we could do that. Yeah. Um, but again, erratic. I don't know why we went. Yeah. Do you know what's funny? While you're going through that whole story, I'm just playing my own story back. So the first thing, and I don't think we should just go over it, is going to America at 18 while grieving. Like, so mm. going to America at 18 is this old mad thing. Like, I've gone, like, I don't even know how to do certain things. I'm on FaceTime to my mum. How do you do <laughs> this? How do you do that? So to do that while grieving at your pops is is a very difficult thing. And you shouldn't have felt like you felt. And probably people were probably telling you that at the time, that you shouldn't feel like you felt. But mm. that's a very, very difficult thing to go through just standalone. So doing that while grieving is, is very, very difficult. Mm. And then you spoke about coming back and basically your head was just gone. And like this is the first time I've probably said this, but I like to um, romanticise me starting this podcast. But basically, it's the same kind of thing. My head was gone. Like, I'm in DC. I've got a little bit of money. I'm living by myself. And I'm just <laughs> and I'm just smashing it. Like, I'm like, I'm getting attention because I've got a British accent in, yeah, in, yeah, in, yeah. in, in, in a in America and I'm just doing anything and I just had to check myself like one Sunday morning I'm hung over and I'm thinking like what are you actually doing with your life like you need to sort yourself out and like do the right things and you know I'm a driven focused person like you spoke about and I was just like yeah like let me think of a project that I can that can refocus me because I'm moving nuts um so yeah no it's just it's, it's just funny to um it's just funny to um 
like reflect on my story and see how it's a little bit similar to yours. Mm. Um, so yeah, when did you when did you say that you would got it together? When would you say that you know you've kind of okay, we're starting to get back to what we know now, what we what we what we are. Um, I think when we started the girls' football club, mm, yeah, I think that when we're passionate about girls' football, like young girls actually having an opportunity. Because we were them young girls and we couldn't see it, right? So, like what we spoke to you a lot, lot about, and we were lucky enough that our opportunity fell into Tottenham Hotspur, great club. But if I don't fall into Tottenham Hotspur, where do I go? And that was the thing in Enfield. We were like, where do these other girls in Enfield go? So mm. we were like, nah, let's just start our own one then. So there was a boys' football club, that was, and we had an opportunity to start a girls' football club alongside. I think that when we started to see that we could have impact with young people, young mm. girls in particular, yeah. that's when I think we started to refocus and be like, oh, sh- I can swear, right? Yeah, of course. Oh, shit, where, sorry. <laughs> TV, TV, <laughs> man. <laughs> MUTV don't let you swear. Do you know what I mean? So, um, but, but yeah, I think that's, that's when we had that moment to be like, no, 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 we've got a purpose in life, you know? Yeah. Like, there's a reason we're here. Don't forget who you are. And that, From for that me, we, we, went, well, we were 20. We were 20. So yeah. I think at 20 years old, we started that rebuilding process, but... Yeah, we definitely lost it for two years, 100%. So to just touch on something else a little bit different as well. So obviously you're women in football, but you're also, you know, Asian people in football. So kind of breaking that barrier where there's not that many Asian people in football, there's not that many women in football. And you guys are kind of, you know, simultaneously doing both. So has that been something that you've been conscious about, about trying to, you know, increase awareness about you know, Asian people in football and trying to be like a trailblazer? Yeah, I think um, the only time it, we, I, me personally, I'm very conscious of it. By default, I was the first Asian to play pro in a, in the female game. Oh, really? Pure default. Oh. Yeah. Um. So from that time where I was recognised for that, and the FA kind of I work closely with the FA currently. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I, I think why not? You know, like you're you represent um Asians, females now in football, and I think if you carry that and you, you hold that on your shoulders, I think you need to be the one shouting about it because who else is going to do that? Mm. Um, but I didn't ever feel, and I, how, I always make this clear, I'd never ever felt like I was an Asian girl playing football because my environment was so good to us. Mm. Um, and that's I have to make that clear because I don't ever want a young Asian girl that doesn't have the right environment to feel like I'm deflecting from that because it must be very hard. But I was always made to feel like I'm all right and I, I'm allowed to play um but yeah I, uh, but so yeah to answer your question i haven't felt conscious about that growing up no okay um so why do you think it is obviously coming from coming from the asian community why do you think it is that we don't have more asian people in football just full stop coaches players yeah. i think it's a, a generational thing like parents they don't see sport from an asian background as a career that like I, I discuss this a, lo- a lot with with the FA and when we we do our talks, it's like naturally they want their children to go into being doctors, being dentists, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now I think it's changing because you can openly see that there is a career path for women footballers. There's a career if you want to be a coach, referee, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's getting there, and I think we're slowly changing that that stereotype. Um, but I think that's probably why, yeah. But I think we are. I think there's been changes yeah, recently. Culture shift yeah, and culture shift, yeah. So just a quick question, like talking about education and educating young females in football. Mm. So within like the men's game, we, me and Dom always have this debate about men's football. So if you're a scholar at a club, you they the club will never push you to do any sort of education. Your coaching stuff you can do because it's part of the program, isn't it, that you have to do when you're at a club. But you can't, let's say I wanted to think about being, I don't know, a plumber. I couldn't do a plumbing course while I was at West Ham. They'd look at me and think, you're not focused. Yeah. You don't want to be a footballer. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But to them, that's how they see it. But to me, in two years' time, if I'm a scholar, I could get released and I'm back to square one. Mm-hmm. Or if I'm lucky enough, you've got a pro deal for five years at 17, you're 21 now, and you're resetting at 21. At 21, people are finishing university. So they're not pushing you in that way. And we feel like they should support you educationally as well. So when you come out of your three, four, five years, whatever is it, at football, you've got something to fall on, yeah. not resetting your life. Is that something that, is it the same for women in football? Are they, would they allow you to study and not judge you while you're playing pro or even while you're playing football? Um, 
Listen, again, I think it's something that's changing. Um, we're always going to try and have our own impact mm. on that because I, I agree, totally agree. I don't think you should ever be defined by a badge. And I think that when you are and when you feel like you're no one without it, that's when you struggle. Oh. So that wrap a around that, friends, yeah, yeah that a lot of our friends have gone through that. Listen, get injured or you, you come out of the game at 30, starting again. Yeah. What, what are you 30 years old? It, but do you, would, would they get judged if they were studying at the same time? Would they, would like the coaches in football think, oh, she's not focused. She don't oh, want to no, get No, 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 no. But, but you got to remember so the women's game is different. That's what yeah? I'm saying. That's so, what I want right. to know. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. it's not that at all. Yeah, so they, that would all. the club support the education? Let's say, I don't know, maybe fund the education to say you wanted to do a course yeah. in media, for instance, or whatever yeah. it was. Would they help you with that? Yeah. Because as, as a young footballer, if you're a guy, there is no way really? you could go to the academy manager or your coach at under 18 or reserve and say I'm thinking about doing I don't know studying mm. blah 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 they, mm. you'd get judged and probably end of the year whenever your contract's up you'd get released or you'd yeah. get pushed out that's wow. how we feel anyway because they they want your focus 150% on football yeah. nothing they want you to live and breathe football that's it nothing else mm. Yeah. So for women, I'm guessing no, the it's completely different. So they are full. Yeah, yeah, wow. they 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 back it. Yeah, yeah but it's the, it's the reality though of, of women's football and where the game's at. Like that's how the game has developed. People have had to have jobs and play football. Yeah. That, to even get to a point where there's actually mm. full time clubs now. So it's always come hand in hand. Yeah. yeah. Education, working oh. as well as so. It's a different mindset, I think. And also the harsh realities of the financials attached is that some people can't afford... I was on the phone to one of the uh, female players earlier. She's at Leicester. She also works for us in our academy. Mm. So she's having a conversation with me this morning to say, my schedule at Leicester's changed next week. I can't come in Monday, Friday. That's fine. We need to support you yeah, because yeah. financially you need to do both. And mm. we knew that when we took you on that you're going to have those issues. Yeah. So I think that... Um, it's something that just comes with women's football yeah. and that's where actually I think it's better developed than I, the men's game. I was going to say, yeah. it's more beneficial. Yeah, like, 100%. That could, like, I'm guessing a female footballer that's been working comes out of football at 30, probably better off than a guy mm. coming out of football at 21. Do you know what I mean? Or 22, because you get released, you are on the ground, you're on the floor, mm. you've got to restart. And, you know, it was it weren't as hard for me, but like speaking about Connor, Connor had to reset Double injuries, had to retire from football and decide this ain't for me. I've got to follow, go to uni. And he's resetting at 21, 22. And it's mad, but I'm, that's the benefits of football. Whereas, you know, I think when females look at the men's game, think, oh, yeah, he, he plays for Chelsea Football Club and he's on X amount. But by 20, you could play for Chelsea 23s for five years and be on X amount. By 20, you have no career. You can't even go, you can just about go into non league. Do you like, I don't know if you know that. You no, could play, you could play for the top five Prem clubs and because now they've built the 23s which is probably I think is the worst thing they've ever yeah, done I see that. because now you're extending the downfall mm -hmm. because before you get released at 18 and you can kind of catch up yeah, and yeah. you know reset yourself and go to uni or whatever but now you come out under 23s they keep you down to your 22 you come out at 22 being released you couldn't come to a national league team or a conference south team which is non-league and take someone else's team because they'll look at you and go yeah. you've not played men's football mm. what well, you've been at Chelsea what does that mean to me so now you're even going lower to get wow. a career, but then the lower you go, the worse the pitches are. You're not getting your the money becomes Different lower. Game, right? So you could be on yeah. like 10k a month, for instance. You're not making 10. You just about probably make 10k in the year in your first year coming into non-league because it's because no one's going to give you money because you're nobody. You haven't played men's football, so they would rather play someone that's got 400 games in non-league, some kid that's never you know played being a pro, than play you. Mm. So like. You guys looking at us, you think we're, we've got it nice. But mm -hmm. when you think about it, you're probably better off than what a young boy coming through is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, wow. So, well, I never thought of yeah, that. I never thought don't. of it like that. No, but yeah, no, that's a great, <laughs> to be fair. Yeah. It's true. Do you know what's funny to me as well is that I don't feel like education is valued in the men's game. So like, have you told me, when you was playing pro, how many players no. on the way to the game are like reading? Reading? What's <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> Everything that's courage is kind of just football, watching football videos, watching highlights, bit of FIFA, mm. bit of Fortnite or whatever. Yeah. Like if you're someone who kind of values education or doing something a little bit different to improve yourself, you're almost kind of seen as someone a bit weird. Like we had someone on a podcast and they're kind of seen as they, they went to uni and ended up in the pro game and they're kind of seen as a little bit different from everybody else. And it's just that it's annoying to me that that is the perception in the men's game mm. that if you're trying to better yourself and just become a more rounded person outside of the club, you're seen as trying to do something different or like you're a traitor almost. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm mad you say that. We've got a really, uh, one of our best friends, Kevin Stewart, 
that Blackpool now. Mm-hmm. We had this same conversation with with him mm-hmm. around this the, the other week, mm-hmm. and he said when he went into property, he was he the boys used to take the piss out of him, judge because they mm. he was judged. He was like, why are you doing that? That's weird. That's weird. Yeah, and he's flying now. Yeah. but back in it, like if he won't fix skin and didn't carry on doing that, mm. it's mm. it's a risk. Yeah, so it's mad. We mm. are literally talking about that. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Right, so obviously at the beginning I spoke to you guys about a little game that we're going to play. So it's just little little quick fire questions round. So we're going to see how well you know each other. Okay. You know, you talk about being attached at the hip. Let's so see. We, we're just going to, so first, so Rosie, these are going to be questions about Molly. Um, so <laughs> what, how this is going to work is I'm going to say the question and then I'm going to count down from five. And you're going to say the answer. Okay. Let's see if the answer is the same. Ah, okay. At okay. the same time, yeah? Okay. Yeah. You got it? So all, right. all the first five are about money. No, these are three questions, oh. about five seconds. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ready? So I say the answer at the same time. Yeah. You yeah. both say the answer at the same, same time. time. Okay, okay. cool. Five seconds. Cool. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what is her favourite food? Five, four, three, two, one. Chinese. Ooh. Oh. I change quite a lot. I don't, I'll go in between, but yeah, okay. <laughs> I do go in between the two. Okay, cool. Had it last night. So what was that? What did you guys say? Chinese and I said Chinese. She said curry. Oh, uh, okay. Footballing hero. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Beckham. David Beckham. Okay. There we go. So you knew. Alright. Yeah, All right, now we're gonna switch it around. Alright. Ready? Right. Favorite ice cream flavor. Five, four, three. Two, one. Strawberry. Oh, yeah. I was going to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. That's good. Jeez. All right. This one might be a bit tough. This one might be a bit tough. Favorite item of clothing at the moment. Ready? Five, oh, that's so hard. four, three, two, one. Trackies. We're inside all the time. Oh, shit, man. <laughs> I was going to ask a question then, not going to lie. Oh, go on. Oh. Can it be shoes or not? Well, giving it away though, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, do you know what a favorite shoe? Do you know what a favorite shoe? Do you think you know what a favorite shoes are? Yeah. All right, let's do that then. Yeah. Five, four, three, <laughs> two, one. Converse. The ones you yeah, got on. Ones got on. <laughs> yeah, the ones you got on. Why are you, ones? Ban- Why are you bantering me about that? <laughs> I'm bantering <laughs> you. They're friendly. She loves them though, innit? Yeah. I've worn them once. <laughs> <laughs> Special occasions today. One, one, one. Yeah. Back. one all. All right, and final one. Fresh. Footballing hero. Mm. Five, four, three. Two, one. Ashley Cole. Okay, she cool. loved Ashley Cole. Can I ask why? Because I used to play left back and he was a left back. I think he's the best left back ever. Do you? Love him. Yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. Have you ever well. met him? No. What would you do if you met him? Do you know what? Is that, I've always said this. Have you got like something you want to tell him or ask him? No, no. I'm, what's wrong with you? <laughs> no, I should, no, I've not, not got anything I want to ask him, but he's the only person I'd get a little bit like, wow. Would Ashley you? Cole, yeah. So you'd get a little bit like... Yeah, uh, but I'll, I'm not like that with people. Yeah, but I, I know, Because yeah. I've grown up and I used to watch all these clips and I just think he's unbelievable, like, full back. I do think he's... Yeah, yeah no, he is. He's, he's one of yeah, the greatest yeah, left-backs, 100%. Yeah, but like back in the day, he was a joke. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel like I would yeah, get a little bit... Yeah, Shavit Fesh was obsessed with him. I was obsessed. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Good time. Good time. So how do you think you... Obviously, you guys live together at the moment, right? How do you think you guys will adjust when that final time comes and, you know, you'll be, you'll be apart? You reckon you'll stay as close or? Done. I actually think it will do us the world of good. So do I. Okay. Do us the world of good. Like we already work together. Actually, we don't play football together anymore, which has been really good for us. I think that's been good. What if we didn't live together? I I, I I'd love genuinely it. think like yeah. we. I'd love it. We know. <laughs> yeah, mate. God, get me out. <laughs> but um, no, I think we're at a point in our lives now where actually like we're very close. Don't get me wrong. Like. Very, very close, but it's almost good to have that bit of time, that space, you know? 100%. It is good, and, like, it doesn't mean, like, we're breaking up, like, do you know what I mean? Like, the, the duo is still there, <laughs> but actually, time apart, you appreciate each other more. Um, so, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind. Oh, well, you moving out? <laughs> <laughs> who's going? Who's going? Who's going? Rosie, shall I tell her? Rosie, shall I tell her? Shall I break it to her? No, I'm joking. No, I'm joking. All right, so now you're, like, obviously, you're, like, you're, like, you're, like, you're like, no, I'm joking. <laughs> right, so now, so now you're like obviously into into the media stuff. You've you've gone into it. Just talk, just talk us through that. What does that look like for you? Mm. Like your schedule at football is straightforward. You know, you wake up in the morning, you train. That's what you're used to. You train, you do this, you do that, blah blah blah. 
But now the media world doesn't work like that. No. How is that not like, not throwing you off, but it's kind of, now you've got a, uh, everything's just all over the place yeah. really, isn't it? So how, yeah. how does that work for you, for you both? Because you're not just doing the media stuff, you're doing this, you're doing that. How, how are you managing everything together and keeping all these different people and different companies mm -hmm. and different, you know, whoever they are happy? Because if you're doing something for me, I want you to be fully focused on me. If I find out that, oh, I can't do this because I've got to do that, I'm going to think, well, you're favouring them over me. Mm -hmm. So how do you keep everyone happy? Because it seems like you're doing it and you're doing it very well. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um, one thing we learned, set expectations from the start. Okay. So our expectation is, yes, we've got the academy now, and that's great, but our media is always going to be in our lives. Okay. And if jobs come up, that, that we're going to go but and But again, again one, one is not... Uh, I think we used to feel like you couldn't do both. Yeah. Whereas I think the biggest and the best decision we ever made was starting our own business with our two business partners, starting Level 7 Academy and actually having control on our, our over our lives. Um, personally, that's what happened for us during lockdown. So we started our own business during lockdown. Amazing. It was really important for us to mm. do that because what was happening before is that you you become dictated to because you work for someone, right? Yeah. They're paying so your wages. They're paying you. So yeah. they've got a right to say, listen, you're doing X, Y, and Z, but you're not doing X, Y, and Z for us. So come on. And it was getting to that point where we said, the only way we will ever solve this issue without having to neglect our other passion, which is looking after young people in football and creating that education and that wraparound, um, do it ourselves. So we did. And that's what we've done now. So we finally, I'll be honest with you, like, and it's weird, we, the timing of this podcast, when you ask earlier about like, when was that moment where you like started to get your, <laughs> yeah, then it was, but now was a massive reset. And I think literally over the last month, we've had a massive reset just because of the own, our own decisions uh, in our own lives to have full control I think. and it's tough like yeah. we had to have real courageous conversations with each other molly had to tell me when i was currently at west ham mm. stop playing football yeah she sat me down one night when i probably was in bits because i didn't train well whatever she said right end of the season you're walking away from football because long term this ain't good for your life mm. you're you're gonna get maximum two three more years out of football and you're done you can't do, we can't do that we can't afford to do that so you're going to stop football now. I got told to do that. Mm. At, the, at the time, I didn't, I didn't want to yeah, get Yeah, of course. Oh, we fell out. We fell oh, out. We fell out. Oh, I, said, yeah. Don't, I said, oh, okay, right. Well, because I'm like, yeah. I, I, went, I went a little bit like. Of course, but you. Yeah, it's, I, I've got defensive. Yeah, like, I didn't course. want to stop playing football. Yeah. But you to tell me to stop playing football. Yeah, exactly. Because you can't. Yeah. Like, that's how I went with yeah, it. That's, yeah, yeah, of that's course. how I went with it. Mm. But reflecting, looking back now, the best decision I made yeah. was to have look myself in the mirror and say, are you going to go and sustain a professional career for more than three years or two years? No, I'm not. I'm not good enough to do it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Walk away from it. Start again. And that's when we, that's when we sat down and, and, mm. and started um, Level 7, wasn't it? Mm. So, but it's hard. Man. Like, you've got to be real honest with yourself, you know? It's, like, it's, not, it's not easy to come uh, away from something that you love. love. And, oh, that's all you know. Yeah. Now, maybe. all of a sudden, yeah. and especially when it comes from someone close to you telling yeah. you, that's when it hurts, I think. I oh, think when hurts. someone from the outside tells you, listen, knock it in the head, mm. but it hurts, but it's not as much yeah. as your, your right hand saying to you, listen, just give it a rest. Yeah. Just. But also, you have, like, all these social media platforms and stuff telling you, like, oh, you're... you're you play at West Ham, like you're this, you're that. Blah, you're blah, a person. Like, you're you're yeah, someone. You're someone. You're someone. Yeah. And so I'm when like, you remove that. And I'm like, listen. Yeah. If if we lost all of that tomorrow, who who are you? Yeah. Are you going to be able to sustain a life without that? No, mm. you're not. Yeah. So, and and that was the thing of like, let's create a life for ourselves where, um, we're in control of what happens, not the other way around. Because that was year by year. She might get another contract. She might not. Yeah. What are you going to do if you don't? Because I'll be honest, I was feeling it. I was feeling, I feel the impact when she's upset. I'm upset. Like, yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? So course. I was like, listen, you're affecting me as well. Like, come on, like, you're, like, come on. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I was saying to her, we, we have an opportunity here that not a lot of people have. 100%. So, and also the opportunities only last so long. So we cannot continue to say no, because we're going to look back in our lives five years time and say, well, we said to no media. to all of this. Yeah. We said no to all these amazing media opportunities for one more year at West Ham. Or something like that. That's I don't know what the yeah, person yeah, is. When you look where, at it like that, yeah, yeah, you, feel like, yeah, you feel stupid for even... Yeah, but mm. we fell out. Back and back. Was, like, yeah, we oh fell out. God. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah. We, didn't yeah. speak. we didn't speak. We didn't speak. And just just another one. Just You're obviously involved in a, a male-driven industry. Mm. How, how you like? What's your first experience when you've had to sit in a meeting, which I'm guessing was more males than females, mm -hmm. and now that you're having this conversation about 
a sport that is driven by men mainly. Mm. They make decisions in football, whatever you want to call it. Do you feel in your first time that you're going into this meet? Do you feel a little bit like oh, it's them against, like it's them against us, basically? Mm. Like I would feel that way if mm. I went into a room and we was talking about whatever it was, and it was a female-driven industry. I'm going into it. I'd feel a little bit like oh, I've got to really prove my point. Did you did you feel like that, or did you know like? No, we, we are bringing something to the table here. Only now. Only now. I'll be honest. Yeah. And I've worked it. Rosie obviously done a football thing, but I was working in football the whole time. Yeah. My opinion never mattered. I knew that. Yeah. I knew that. I knew I knew it. And I think that it's a really hard thing to, to feel like you're waking up every day, you're going into a job. And because I'm a girl, it don't matter what I say, it ain't going to get listened to. But yeah. you have to carry on, right? Yeah, of so course, yeah, yeah. you learn from them experiences. And, mm -hmm. and now it's about choosing the right people. So our two business partners are men. Yeah. But our two business partners are men with, with egos, with no egos that allow us to have an opinion and we feel valued every day. Of course. So, so would we make the same mis mistakes twice? No. But have I felt valued in conversations for the last five years at a previous um, organisation? No, no chance. And um, It's mad, isn't it, that you say mad, that? Because you was, like, you was both heavily involved mm. at big companies, you know, sitting in the rooms of like CEOs or, or whatever to speak about things, but knowing that you're there. Like, they want you there, but they don't really want you there. No, Which, yeah, like, yeah. It, do you know how mad 100%. it sounds? You know, I've got to say, no, I feel like... You know how mad it is? You're going into this. You know, I've got to say, yeah, I've got to say, when it came to the bigger meetings, that's when I felt value. It was weird. Oh, really? It was weird. Oh, yeah, yeah, So yeah. the bigger meetings, I'm listened to because the bigger people in that room get it. They get, yeah. But it's the people here... On your... Not your level, not but around my, your level. Yeah, so... Yeah, or maybe level, a little bit above you. Do you my know level. I mean? yeah. My level. There's people on my level yeah. where I'm like... Why do you not listen to me? Or, <laughs> yeah. But, but he the does. Guy right up, yeah. what, what, what is going on here? Yeah, it was yeah. like a power thing. I'll be honest. There was a massive power struggle, I think, mm. of that. And look, you learn a lot and you learn to just put yourself in better environments. Have we done that now? 100%. And mm. I, I, I pride myself on that. I never want to wake up and feel like I'm not listened to or my opinion's not valid. Um, and you have to change that if you feel like that. So 100%. No, mm. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. 100%. <laughs> So just to take it back a little bit, how did you guys first get involved in doing the media stuff? Like, did someone approach you? Were you actively, like, seeking it out? Like, how, did, how does that go? Do you know what? We, it was the boat, right? Yeah, we were on a, yeah. a boat. Um, <laughs> we were on a Down boat the on the Thames. the summer day. <laughs> summer day. <laughs> was, yeah. And we were watching the World Cup on a boat. That yeah, was yeah. it. Um, and then a really, like, good friend of ours um, had an agent at the time. And we introduced ourselves not thinking anything of it like you know what me and Mo were like we just yeah, talked yeah. to anyone mm. ended up speaking to to our the agency who are currently our agents now and uh, the lady just said like oh can we meet like we want to we got a text the next day didn't we so asking us to meet her and we were like oh my gosh what? why does she want to meet us like, yeah, we've never yeah. done anything <laughs> in that industry and then she just sat us down and said genuinely I think when you, if you're in the right hands you two are going to be great and it's just about someone looking after you and grabbing hold of you. And she grabbed hold of us. And that yeah. was it, really, to be honest. And she allowed, she put us in uncomfortable situations where we'd be in front of the camera and not know what to do and not know what to say. But would we be um, as comfortable as we are right now if she didn't do that back then? No way. And we have everything to thank our agency for um, because they saw something in us when we didn't see it ourselves. So mm -hmm. that was huge for us. So what's, or who is the the person that you've met in the industry and be like, that's my, that's my guy, or that's my person, like they're sick, that, or might have got their arm around you and said, oh yeah, like come, let me show you the way. Um, for me, JD Dyer, so he's a Sky Sports presenter. Okay. He's been really good to us, like, and I have no problem, like, saying mm. that, like, um, our, our agency, obviously, Tongue Tied Media are wicked, like, them, them what girls. What are they called? Tongue Tied Media. They are like... Quite possibly, like, they've just been everything to us. They back us. Yeah. They back us. They believe in us. Mm. There's no better feeling, is there? Oh, no. Just to know that the people that are looking after you, they just want you, you to do well. Yeah. Like, they, they're so... De it's like sometimes they're more desperate than you to do well, which yeah. is mad. I know mm. it sounds mad. It's crazy. Yeah. And they see more in you than you do yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and there's not a lot of people like that. No. You know? yeah. There's not a lot of people like that no. that want you to do well genuinely just for you, whether, whether they're making whatever, and it's good for them as well, but... Yeah. Anyone that's gonna get anything from it, it's gonna be you two. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And that's that's amazing to be surrounded by people like that because they're the unknown. Because when you first met them, you have no right to have a conversation with someone you don't know. But mm -hmm. you've opened up, and like you said, because you're so you know open minded, you speak to people, you get to know people. You've just fallen mm. 
through your positive energy, you've fallen into something and now they're, they're affecting you in the right way, which is amazing. Do you guys believe in luck? 100%. Do you? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say not so much like luck, but um, <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? Um, if you've got the right energy and the right mindset, so if you're always positive and you think, you know, good things, blah, 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 something down the line will fall into your lap. So like, you know, like you, you talk about... Um, things are going so well for you right now and you've had this space or whatever, mm. I feel like you've probably was in a right mindset for things to open up. And I don't know if you feel like that, but probably if you think about it, it's how it works. You know, opportunities, I've been in some bad places, but I would never think like it's a bad thing. Like, I, like even like my car getting stolen. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah, my car remember, got stolen. Yeah. And I remember at the time it got stolen till this day, I've never, when it first got stolen, I remember just, Walking home, just thinking, I'm going to walk home. I didn't even care about the car. I was just like, ah, oh, the car's gone. And I remember talking to my friend Marvin and saying to him, my car got stolen. And he was like, what? And he was in shock. And I was like, like it's just a, it's a piece of metal, isn't it? It will come back or whatever. And I was just so chilled. And like, everything's just gone so much better from just thinking of that. Now I've got like my own car. I've, I had the car on finance, which I've never done before. Now it's gone. Honestly, when it was, it's like a weight was taken off my shoulders and I actually own my car. I know it's nothing massive, mm. but do you know, I'm, like you finance a car, it's gone. Now I actually own my car. So mm. like, it's, I would have never ever bought my own car. Like again, I would have just carried on financing that car four or five years and just carried on. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, a, yeah, it's, yeah. I know it's mad, but no, yeah, a positive come out of it. Yeah, 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 because yeah, now yeah. it's my next car. Now I actually own and yeah. have no debt or nothing. If, if things go shit, I lose my job or whatever. I'm not having to pay out. Cause the first thing I was thinking is, I'm gonna pay out this car. I've got like 25 grand left on it. Yeah. Like, what do I do? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But everything yeah. gets sorted out. No, so I do right. believe in, in positive energies and then that falls into your lap. Uh, yeah, so I think I agree with you. I think, I don't, be, I don't believe in luck because I don't think people, successful people get lucky. I think they're ready and the opportunity just comes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's lucky because mm -hmm. you're ready, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're not ready, that opportunity is just gonna pass you back. Yeah, yeah. So you have to be ready. Yeah, so yeah, I don't know yeah. if it's lucky, Yeah. but things just, do seem to fall into place at times. You're like, how did that happen? It's crazy. Like, if that's lucky, I don't know. Yeah. Because you're ready and you took the opportunity, right? Yeah. So I think you, we should give ourselves more credit. But there is definitely things that happen and you're like, how has this... <laughs> no, when right? you look back in it, when oh, you're like, oh, by the way, I don't believe in luck. <laughs> I don't believe in... No way, no. Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe in luck. Mm. And like you said, I think you remain positive in shit situations at times and you attract the right stuff. That's mm. it. That's, that, that is luck in my eyes. Mm. Um, so I hate when people are like, oh, you're unlucky you got given that or that opportunity or that gig. And I'm like, no, I'm not. They're just, <laughs> no, they're just jealous, not. isn't it? They're like, just jealous. Oh, uh, same, same with everyone though, right? Like when we've got good things going in our lives, it's like, well, no, I actually work my ass off to be fair. And like we prep, we put ourselves in uncomfortable situations like and that, and that's not luck in my eyes. So, so yeah. I've got, I got a quick question, yeah, about football. We had this, remember we had this chat on the podcast about women's football. We said, obviously, because of like football is, dri I, I feel football is driven because of amazing moments in the game. That's why everyone watches it. Not like, no one's sitting there, like obviously the coaches, they watch the tactics and stuff, but we all love match of the day. Why? Because you see the best bits. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think it attracts millions and millions of fans. And we, I feel anyway, a little bit women's football doesn't get that many amazing moments because obviously, the way a men's body is built and a female is a bit different. Like we're more stronger, powerful. It's just a, it's yeah, just a, you, know, you can't do nothing yeah. about mm -hmm. it. Do you know, we're quicker, more powerful. I feel like if the pitch was condensed, you'd see more magical moments because you see like football, because it's so high paced and everyone's in trouble. It makes you do things like of instinct. So like when we talk about like Messi, Ronaldo, when the spaces are tight, they do the most amazing things. Like step overs, get, do you know what I mean? Mm. Whereas in women's football, I feel like there's a lot of space. There's a lot of time on the ball. A lot of things going on. Do you think if the pitch was condensed, that makes it more interesting and exciting? No. Okay. Like personally, yeah. I've, I've heard this debate. Like it goes back and forth. Mm. Like personally for me, no. I think that it's all down to where the women's game is. Contact hours. The fact that actually it's only been a full-time league for the last couple of years, for okay. example. So now you're, now you're getting clubs that... Um, are producing. that are producing top players and you've got I'll be honest with you the WSL which is the women's football yeah, league yeah, over here yeah. the WSL is in my opinion the most competitive league in the world for okay. women's football yeah. why? because now you have full time clubs and all the foreign all the best players from around the world want to come play here yeah because everyone lately but, has been coming yeah, yeah. yeah we, but so it's so nothing to yeah but that's what I'm saying like whether you shrink the pitch or whatever mm. in my opinion it's just about what you're producing on it right so 
Um, but again, I think that comes from where the game's at and financial contributions, etc. that allows everyone to be full-time so that ultimately the more contact hours mm. you have, the better you become. Yep. So as long as that starts from a young age and you can progress as much as the boy, yes, yep. we're different, we're built different. Mm. It's a different yeah, of course, game. Yeah, yeah. It's a different style mm. of game. But um, yeah, to your thing, nah, I just think it's down to what you produce on it. Sick. Do you think we should amend anything in a women's game compared to the men's game? Or it should literally just be everything exactly the same? So like the goals, for example, we spoke yeah. about goals. Like should the goals be a little bit smaller, for example? No, the only thing that should change is the comparison. If you remove the comparison from women's to men and just look at the women's game in its own space and its own right and don't compare it, it's a great game. Mm. Stop comparing. Men are different to us. So if you look at it, it's like... You ain't going to compare the female tennis player to... A, it don't work like that. They never do it. So I don't know why we still continue to do it at football. Mm. I think when that comparison stops, I think that's when we're going to stop getting these... Oh, she can't kick okay. it. As, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, that's where the, we get killed, I think. The women's <laughs> games. How, how, what, is, what are we going to do to do that? Because it feels like it needs to... Be, it does... I agree 100% on what you're saying. I've never actually thought of it that way. Mm. But it's actually, you're right. It's not a different sport, but it's got to be seen as... Nothing compared to the men's football. Yeah. If you watch the women's football, you've got to know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah. And this is what you're watching. But like you said, it's non-stop comparisons. Boy will compare to a girl, girl will compare herself to a boy. How are we going to stop that and push it? This is, a, this is women's football. Just look at it in its own space. Yeah. I don't think you ever fully stop it no. in anything, any mm. industry. Any, people are always going to have their opinions. Yeah, like yeah. There's keyboard warriors out there that want to, you know, but I think that there is, so it's full of them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that, and... You're never, ever going to stop that. But what you can do is expose the women's game to more people. So then hopefully, yeah, you hope that Change then people jump on board yeah. and perceptions are changed. But at the same time, if they don't, we don't care. <laughs> like, literally, <laughs> we don't care. It's like, you know, like, like <laughs> it, yeah. it's, it's got it's to be to that point where it's like, how much are you going to let it affect you? Yeah. Because we work in women's football a lot. And our, our worlds are football. Boys, girls, whatever. We work in football. So you've got if you're going to let let that affect you day to day then you're going to become quite drained because you can't fight every battle so nah. just let yeah, people honestly you know let people have their opinions yeah. and let's just get on with it can't control it and like talking about emotions mm -hmm. you've had through football mm -hmm. so you go into a change room and your coach or your manager is a male like my man i've never to be fair i've never re i think i might have had maybe one or two managers that i've spoken to about my career how do i do how do i go better or maybe if i've had like you know relationship problems or stuff at home there's sometimes you rely on your manager or your coach for instance because you see them as that's the person you spend time with yeah, all yeah. the time so you feel like i can trust this person how how do you do that if your your coach or your manager is a male like mm. how can you let's say if you've got emotions you've i don't know something has happened in your relationship something personal to you mm. a, a man can't tell you how you feel do you know what i mean because i don't it's not the same feeling it's not the same reaction mm. do you do you have you ever felt like I need to speak to someone, but it can't be him because he's my coach. Mm. Whereas if it was a female coach, mm. it'd make it yeah. easier, wouldn't it? Really and truly. Because yeah, 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 100%. But there's usually staff who are females. So like you've got uh, the, the female coaches. The female yeah. coaches, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. And the physios in there and things mm. like that. So you go and reach out to whoever you feel most comfortable with. But I don't feel as, as close, do you know what I mean? Because I wouldn't go to the coach because I, I don't have a connection with you. I have a connection with, I, I play and die for the manager. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, like they talk about men's, they need more men coaches in female football. I don't know if that's the right thing. Like, why Why do you not have more female? Like, why do people keep saying we need more men's coaches in football because they can bring this and bring that? Yeah. Because I feel like when you're a player, you would you you run for a brick wall for your coach. And I feel like you have more of a personal connection. If it's, you know, like if I, no disrespect, but if I had a female coach, I don't think I would be more comfortable because... I can't come to you and talk to you about personal things because mm -hmm. I need that connection to go through a brick wall for you. And you know what yeah. football's like. It's mm -hmm. like a big family. Yeah, yeah. And you, it's, it's a bit of friction. Does that... Yeah. Got do you to, feel no, that I, way? Do you know what? I've got to say, like, I actually disagree with you as well. Like, because I'll be honest, yeah, for me, like, I'm playing at Enfield Town now, for example. Yeah, yeah. Both my manager and my coach are men, mm. right? But I genuinely believe it's the person, that type of person, because I think that I've met coaches in the men's game that are male, uh, in the women's game that are male, 
that can quite easily relate to their teams. Like, yeah, they, like they, James Mars when we were at Brighton. I'll be honest, there's full of coaches yeah. like... Oh, what a guy, James Mars. Oh, James Mars, legend. Oh, yeah. and that, like, but, but he's, a, he's a man. Yeah. James Mars, oh, he's the a definition ma- of a man, by the yeah, way, yeah. yeah. Like, but you can reach a- out to him and if you, if you needed a cuddle, he yeah. would also be able to give Amazing. you a cuddle. Yeah. So it's... This is what I'm saying. You've yeah. got to be really careful about how you generalise things because mm. yeah. you can't. Because yeah. you can't turn around and go... I wouldn't speak to a, uh, that male coach because he's a man. Yeah. That's not the truth because there's probably a lot of female coaches out there that I wouldn't speak to because yeah. they're female mm. uh, or because of that. Not because they're female, but I don't look at it as male and female. Yeah. It's like, can best, I relate to you? Yeah. Are, you a per- are you relatable? Yeah. Are you personable? Are you, do you care for me? Because I know there's plenty probably female managers out there that mates that I've got in the pro game wouldn't go to them. Yeah, wouldn't go to them, mm. but they prefer to be managed. So for me, it's personal preference. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think you can generalise. I think that... Um, it, it is just about how that manager is from a uh, player perspective. Yeah, yeah. That, that's it's just for that, like just so people get to understand how it works because I feel like people feel it's you know like you're looking at a man's game and it's again that comparison, but really and truly, it's like you said, it's personal preference. Yeah. Females don't look at men coaches and think I can't talk to him. It's oh. just like literally what you prefer to do. Yeah. So like young females coming through, hope like they hear this. And it's not, it doesn't matter if there's a man in front of you or a female, exactly. they could both have, you know, the same experience, same everything, and they can actually help you and guide you. Yeah. So no one should feel like if you're a young female coming through, you shouldn't feel, oh my God, I can't, oh, I, can't no I, I don't want, I don't yeah. want to sign. That's what I'm saying. I don't, right. wanna, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I probably can imagine that some young female footballers probably, if they've got two clubs to decide from, one manager is a, like one club's got a man as their coach and the other one's got a female. I'm going to guess y- if you're young, you're going to go to the, towards the female because you know, you're related, but you shouldn't do, should you? No, you shouldn't. Yeah. No so way. like, it's just no to open way. up so they yeah, can yeah, understand yeah, yeah. that so don't judge best, because best person for the job. That's, that's yeah. going to help you in your career in and your on career. your journey. That's yeah. It. Wicked. So just, just one last question. Um, how big do you see the women's game getting? Like, do you see it being like, the Premier League, but for women, because obviously we've seen, you know, a lot of the the top um, women's players come into the to the Premier, um, the WSL to play. So, do you see it, you know, keep continuing to grow and ended up being like the Premier League, but for for women? It's only going in one direction, a hundred percent. It's literally only going to get bigger. Um, there's Euros coming up. There's World Cups coming up in Australia and New Zealand. Like the brand, everything, everything about it is only going in one direction. So. As I said earlier, if there's people out there that don't want to support the game, that's also fine, yeah. you know? But there's loads of people that do, and young girls coming up need to know that there's a massive opportunity now. If you're a young female in the game, have a go. And if you don't necessarily want to play, there's also opportunities off it. We're, we're prime examples of that. Mm. All right, We don't play no more to a level, but we work in it every day. And if that's what we can sort of show people, then we've done our job. Sick. So what's next? What's next for you guys? Obviously, we're at the beginning of the year. Some um, dinner, hopefully. I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're still in lockdown and the stuff. So, so what's yeah. next? What's the rest of this year going to look for you guys and, and beyond? Yeah, just building uh, the academy. So level seven is very important for us. And we'll, we'll look to build that. And organically, though, we're not going to rush that. Mm. No, no need to. Um, and then oh, we're big believers in saying yes, you know. Yeah. We'll just say yes to opportunities and see how it plays out. And stop putting pressure on ourselves. We used to do it back in the day. Yeah. Oh my God, so bad. Like just now, now we've grown up and we're just like, look, we say yes and we see how things go. I, I'm not going to go and say, turn around and say to you, yeah, I need to be doing this by this date and this by that date. We used to do that, by the way. Mm. Don't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, sick. Well, thank you so much, guys, for coming down. I really appreciate it. Um, Good luck with your ventures. Obviously, we've been seeing you on the TV and that. You've been <laughs> smashing it. And we, we hope to, to see you, you know, doing some more, more things in the future. That's been a Detailed on Map podcast. We'll see you guys again soon. Peace.